Welcome back. And now we're going to make a start on putting in the IC sockets. And as we go, I'm going to put in the capacitors that go with those. And we'll finish up. Uh, that takes us from U1 all around the front of the board to U10. And then over in the microcontroller area, U11, which has got some extra capacitors that make up the charge pumps for the MAX3232 um, RS232 interface. So I'll begin, uh, we'll uh, solder this one in in real time at its capacitor. I'll then save you the boring pain of watching all the others go in until I get to the backside. I'll do those in time lapse and then we'll go back to real time to finish it off. It's gonna be a lot easier uh, putting these in using a piece of tape just to hold them in place so they don't drop out. And as we've spoken about with all the other uh, multi-pin components, it's a good idea just to tack in a couple of opposite corners, make sure it's sitting down properly before proceeding to solder all the other pins in place. So we just get those two opposite corners down, remove the tape, have a look, see that it's sitting down. I know I made a mess of that. It's actually perched up quite a bit. So with my finger pushing from the other side and heat on those two pins, I can make sure it's sitting down just as I want it. And now we'll just get around and solder the other leads down. Now I should have pointed out, um, just habit, uh, that I start off doing this thing the right way. Uh, you'll notice on the silk screen for each of the others, there's a little uh, moon or crescent at one end of the IC outline in the silk screen. And if you compare that with one of the um, sockets, you'll see they also have a small indent in the shape of that crescent or half moon. And so, Although it doesn't matter for the socket itself, you know, technically they're reversible, it's a good idea to line those up for the sockets because when you come to put the ICs in later, that will help you get the ICs oriented the right way around. The capacitors on the other hand, they're not polarized. It doesn't matter which way around they go. Uh, there's nothing dramatic on them like the resistors. For, you, for my OCD to kick in, but uh, there's a little bit of text on them, incredibly barely readable with my eyesight. Just like the resistors, drop them through, hold them in place with a finger and just bend the legs out at roughly 45 degrees. That just holds it in place well enough. While you solder it up, check your handiwork. And if you like what you see, take the excess leads off with your side cutters. Okay, well, having got that first one in place, I'll quickly uh, kick over to time-lapse and I'll see you on the other side when we're ready to put you, the socket for U11 in on the back of the PCB.
Right, that's a lot of soldering. And I know having made a few of these boards up by now, uh, it's very easy to get this far. And I have at times forgotten the whole side of one of the um, IC sockets. So it's really worth going back and doing a good visual inspection of all the work. Uh, check each, have a good look at each pin, make sure you've got a decent amount of solder on it. And remember, if you're gonna to touch anything up, uh, try heat first and just let it reflow um, before you resort to adding more solder. And uh, you might've noticed somewhere along the way, um, by the time I got down here, I saw that one of the LEDs was bent over. So I just moved it back into place and grabbed the alignment guide and just used that to make sure it was uh, in the right position. So we'll just finish this off now. We're turning to the back of the board and we just have the last socket for U11. Uh, the nice thing about all the sockets is that that little crescent or moon all face what would be the right hand end of the board from the front. So you don't have to be watchful of them chopping and changing. They all go the same way. So this one goes to this edge and all the others were on this facing this edge. Right, let's get this done quickly and put those last resistors in and we're done for this time. Did I say resistors? I meant capacitors, just those last capacitors. Let's get around and solder this one up. And now we've got a few a, a few good capacitors. So we're looking at C2 and then C13, 14, 15, 16. So I'll get all the capacitors in at the same time, much as we were doing a group of resistors with the LEDs.
That's a bit of a forest of capacitor leads, so just double check that you got them all before you start snipping them off. Now, if you've got any concerns whether you've got everything, just um, maybe spend some time, get out your multimeter, do some continuity testing, check around, make sure you haven't bridged anything. Again, visual inspections are almost as good, just to make sure uh, you can verify that you haven't certainly haven't forgotten anything and missed any pads. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we've got a bunch of 10k resistors to put in here around these toggle switches and then some other miscellaneous components including the reset switch with its accompanying capacitor, a bunch of pin headers on this side and another resistor and a transistor. But you can read about those in the assembly guide as well. All right, well, we'll see you next time for that video.